Okay, welcome everyone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about estimation number talks. So hopefully you've probably already watched the video on number talks and we have a video on fraction talks. So this is basically estimation talks. And how it works summed up is that basically you provide students with pictures, with images, and have discussions on estimations based off them. So here we'll take a look at some photos to give you an idea of what that can look like. All right, so this is just a typical photo of, I guess someone's having a party and this is their fridge. <laughs> Students take a look at this picture, right? It's just a regular image. Students take a look at this picture and make some estimations off of it. Now, you don't want students to really count and solve and figure that out. Estimation is really just thinking about the magnitude, the size of what we have here. Now, students of course can do things like perhaps find the area, right? And then make an assumption off of that. As you can see, there is a can missing, so then they would have to adjust uh, what they created. But you really just want students to gauge. So taking a look at this example, I actually gave this photo to my son when he was in second grade, and he came up with an interesting way that I didn't think of it. I mean, at that time, he didn't know area, so he didn't use that type of method. What he just figured out was that there were four groups of 12 and then uh, half a group. So of 12. So I asked them, like, I didn't see it that way. I didn't know what the hell he did. He w I didn't see him counting anything. And he just was reasoning like the cans, the packs of cans. So they come in a 12 pack. And if you see here, here you have Coke, Sprite, root beer, and seltzer. So that means that there were four packs that were brought and then half of one, which is that Diet Coke. So he computed and kind of figured out how much there were based off that. Now, estimation routines do not require computing right away. You want students to estimate and think about how much there is. And then you can definitely, of course, have them compute later if you want to. So you want students discussing, right? The goal of estimation routines is to have them as a warm up, right? You want this used as a numeracy routine and you want them to be exposed to it more often than not. I cannot say this enough. Do not hold estimation lessons as isolated parts of your curriculum. Oftentimes we teach students to estimate right before we get into the addition unit. Or another example, oftentimes we show students how to estimate uh, right before we get into a multiplication unit. That doesn't do anybody any good. You want students to see estimation as a more natural and normal part of their life because that is a natural and normal part of our lives, of our everyday lives. We do it as adults all the time. We want students to see this as well in their world. Now, there are many different resources that you can use for estimation routines. I personally like using uh, photos and videos for this. So this is an example of literally just a teacher grabbing, going to the gym, grabbing a bag of the balls that the gym teacher puts in there, bringing it into her classroom and saying about how many balls are in here. They're not counting it. They just have to look at the actual bag and make estimations off of it. Talking about what's too low of an amount, what's too high of an amount. If someone says there's 100 balls in there, you gotta have a discussion around it. Now then after the teacher did lay them out on the carpet and the students counted it one by one to see um, if their estimations were accurate or close. I saw this activity while I was coaching in a building and I literally jetted towards the gym <laughs> to see what they had going on in there in order to replicate this activity. And you would be amazed with how many things you can find in the school where you can do estimation around it. So now you saw an example of a photo, you saw an example of real life estimation using your environment. Now I wanna show you this. I love this website. I'm gonna teach you how to go through it, but let me just talk about it first. So this is uh, a website called 360 Degree Cities. Basically, they give panoramic views of places all over the world. This one in particular is in Madrid, right, in Spain. And all you would have to do is, you know, you pick a place, you do, you know, you search for it, you find the panoramic, just kind of go through around there, and then you ask students questions off of it. Open up the discussion first. What do you notice? And then students talk about that. And then your questioning can get a little bit more specific. Okay guys, so about how many windows do you think there are? And if this is only like one half of the whole structure of buildings, right? Let's say it's a square. What do you think, how many windows would there be then, right? If there's a whole other half of this? 
Or you can talk about the canopies, right? About how many canopies are there. You can do things uh, like measurement. How tall do you think that light post is, right? And you can use that person there in order to help with scaling. You can do like estimating even geometry things that you find, like about how many squares do you see or how many about how many rectangles can you find in this picture. But here's why I love this activity so much. It's not just about estimation. I am like so hardcore on why estimations should be in the classrooms more than they are, right? But what I also love about this piece, so estimation, I love, check. Second piece is that students get to travel all over the world. We want students to find math in their everyday life, right? That's the goal for them to see, hey, there's a purpose for this. You're surrounded by it. But this pushes it even further. You're asking students to find math in places that are not part of their world, but just part of the world. Now, I want to mention this um, from one of my favorite teachers. We talked about this, uh, the 360 degree cities in a coaching session. And immediately that teacher took it on um, in her classroom. And this is what she said. I used Rosalba's brilliant idea of bringing in 360 degree cities the website to my small virtual math group today with four second graders. They were so excited to see their families' countries, Guatemala, El Salvador, Cape Verde. We looked for math all around and talked about shapes and measurements, time, and more. I'm so excited to explore more and see where this takes us. Think about culturally responsive or culturally relevant teaching. This is a chance for not only students to explore math in places maybe they're from, in places their, their families are from, like this teacher mentioned, but it also gives students an opportunity to find math in places that they are just curious about or that they've never even heard of before. Madagascar, what's that? I don't know, let's find it and find some math in it. I mean, think about a way to bring in culture in that way. So I know I'm getting super hyped up in this video, but I truly, truly love this routine because of that. It hits my two favorite things, estimation and math in the real world. So I want to encourage you to find math in photos and in videos in your environment, like we talked about in your school and your community. Now, I do have a video that I want to point you out to in this membership. It's called Math and Art. Because when we talk about photos primarily, I mean, photos are art, right? Photography is an art form. So I worked on a video for a conference on how to incorporate photography and math. And a lot of that has to do with this. I didn't want to make two videos on the same thing. So I wanted to keep this one short to show you how you can kind of play around with it. But that math and art video gets really specific on how you can uh, hit specific standards with uh, photographs. So I want you to go check out that video. All right, everyone, that's a wrap for me. I cannot wait to see how you utilize estimation routines, estimation number talks in your classrooms.